Hello, hello, my spectacularly scented friends. Welcome to my world of fragrance. I hope that you are enjoying the holiday festivities this year if you're in a country that celebrates. And if you are spending the holidays alone this year, then fret not, I have some amazing content for you lined up. Hopefully I can get it all out for you and things don't get too busy. Today's topic is smolderingly glamorous perfumes for those holiday parties, festivities, New Year's Eve, all of the things that are to come for us. And I have a lineup of some fragrances that are super glamorous to me, but maybe not straightforward choices. Hopefully you find something new here and things that would wear well with dressed up attire. I think it's so fun to dress up and then seal everything with a fragrance that kind of sets the tone for the event that you're going to. The first fragrance that we have was my scent for New Year's Eve last year, and I like to pick a scent for New Year's Eve that kind of represents the tone for the year that I'm about to step into. Um, I kind of feel like you have a, not reincarnation, but the year or you have a fresh start twice a year for me it's september when it's kind of like that back to school feeling of autumn and then it's also january but yeah i like to reinvent myself all the time <laughs> but this one from re profumo i've had for many years and it's just one of those fragrances that never ends like it's such good strong quality that it lasts and lasts for a very long time you can have it for many years so it's a good investment um, so like I said, this one I wore for New Year's Eve last year, and this is an unusual take on amber because it's not a cuddly, rounded off, sweetened by vanilla amber. This is an amber that's quite macho. It's a macho amber to me. The dry down of this fragrance has vetiver, so yeah, like I said, it doesn't turn sweet in that sense. It's subtle, the dry down is sensual but instead of going the vanilla route, it's going the vetiver route. So you are making somewhat of a statement with this fragrance. Re Profumo kind of do their own thing when it comes to fragrance and they have their own style and they're, they're neither like French or Italian or if there even is an Italian style of perfumery, um, but they do their own thing. This is one of those regal scents that I could imagine somebody in the royal family wearing and who would it be? Hmm, let me think, who in the royal family would wear this? Some sort of prince or a king would wear this. As I recall, it's not as expensive as it looks. It just looks like, woo, but it's actually decently priced. The next fragrance that we have is from a watch brand called Frank Müller, and I'm a fan of their fragrances. This one is quite possibly my favorite cherry fragrance. It is called Eternitas. I think it's Latin. And this is cherry liqueur with basically it's like the opposite of that macho amber this is inviting in a different way the cherry is slightly bitter here though because a lot of people when they think of cherry fragrances they think of the obvious choices and those fragrances seem a little bit more easygoing this is a dramatic cherry it's dark in color and it's accompanied by so many other notes so it's cherry but with complexity a lot of complexity I mean, you've got leather in here, you've got saffron, you've got vanilla, you've got rose and patchouli and amber, like it's a lot of things, but all of these things are subtly dancing around the cherry. And yeah, this cherry has been kept in liqueur for a while, if you understand what I mean. So I just love the drama of this one. And when I wanna wear a cherry fragrance, this is the one that I go for, Eternitas try it out the next fragrance that we have is something of a sparkling glass of champagne and fruits and it's so fun and party like for me it reminds me of carmen miranda dancing at the copacabana and it is patchouli noir by christian provenzano uh he's a perfumer who likes punchy fragrances this is like it's very much his style as in make an impact but it's also fun and playful. So Patchouli Noir also has an intense version, but the intense version I find doesn't have that same amount of bubbliness. It's the bubbliness of the opening of this fragrance that really gets you. Like if you like effervescent, uh, sparkling drinks-like fragrances, then definitely try out Patchouli Noir. It does not smell like a dark, a black patchouli as the name says. <laughs> like. I hate it when names are misleading. It's so annoying. It's like you try something, you expect it to smell like the name, and then it doesn't. But this is a pleasant surprise. It's not a black patchouli, but it is 
red berries and fruits that are fizzling. And then you have the patchouli that comes in, but then you also have these subtle florals, um, osmanthus and jasmine and tuberose, and they're done in a fruity way. I'm not like the biggest fruity perfume person. I think I've said this before, but this is like, this is fun, but it would go well with black tie. It would go well with a velvet blazer like this, no problem. It's fun yet serious at the same time. Like, I just don't know how to describe it. It's just great for events. Ooh, I just love the opening of this fragrance. It makes me so happy. I would gladly respray this, but it does last a while. Like I would respray it just to smell the opening because it's just so interesting. It's like a glass of champagne. Like it's really great, fruity champagne. So try this one out if you like the sound of that. Um, yeah, the dry down does go a little bit more patchouli-esque, but this is worth it, even just for the first five minutes. <laughs> like <laughs> one of the best openings. The next fragrance that we have, and these are all unisex as always. Like I'm definitely thinking about both or all genders, sorry. And the next one is by Austin's and this was in my fall lineup. It is Impression Cedarwood Heart. I think that this makes a marvelous evening scent. It's not as super duper punchy as some of these other ones, but it's it's elegant, it's subtle. It is a big orris to me, orris and galbanum and orris, to some people because it's the root. It can come off suede, buttery, leathery, or if you're very familiar with Oris, it just smells like Oris to you. So it could be interpreted as suede, but lived in. It kind of has this vintage inspiration behind it. So it's like old school glamor, except made modern. And that's what this brand does pretty well is combine inspiration with modernity. So Impression Cedarwood Hearts, definitely check it out. And what I love about these is they do come with, or at least mine came with like a preparation oil. So you actually have the oil form of this and you can wear the oil form and then you can apply this on top and it will last you all day, all night, until the after parties, until the next day. So yeah, definitely try to do that for your parties if you want your fragrance to last, like have an oil underneath it or lots of moisturizer, make sure you're moisturized and hopefully it will last for the entire event. The next fragrance that we have is another fantastic party scent because it's beautiful and fun and interesting and charming, yet it also lasts and it projects. And it is by Ramon Monegal called Flamenco. This one I just keep as an evening fragrance. I just find it so great for evening time. It starts off with a fun, juicy raspberry that then spins off into this whirlwind of fruits and florals and it's it's rosy it's mainly rose with raspberry that i get out of this fragrance and then it gets warm and ambery in the dry down with um some woods and some cypress as well it's based around flamenco so the flamenco dancers so think fiery think red think passion think you know love a passion filled evening is what you are aiming for <laughs> when you wear flamenco so it is fruity floral but i know lots of men that wear this fragrance as well so Fear not, gentlemen. Easily one of my faves from Ramon Monegal. The next fragrance that we have is a popular one by MFK, and I totally get it. I totally understand why. This was the first MFK that grabbed my attention. The rest I was kind of like, mm. but this one, first sniff, I loved it. It is a gooey amber and vanilla, and it has the MFK subtlety to it, so it's not just that simple like he has some undisclosed ingredients that he puts in there so that it has these you know elevated subtleties and even the name i mean consoir like big evening big night uh this is like that song tonight's gonna be a good night like <laughs> well maybe it's not like in college or anything this is more after college i would say but it's definitely you're setting yourself up for a good night with uh consoir it's a pleasure for you to wear, it's a pleasure for other people to wear. And yeah, 
there's a reason why this one is popular. And I don't say that about a lot of things, okay? There are a lot of popular fragrances that I'm not on the hype train for, but this one, before I even knew it was hyped, I loved. So, Consoir, I can always recommend. Now, the next fragrance that we have rhymes with Gangnam, and it is called Nanban by Arkis. This one is one of those good evening fragrances as well because it is rich. It starts off with pepperiness and saffron. I love saffron in fragrances like evening time and elegance equals saffron. It's also an expensive ingredient. Like in real life, if you buy saffron, that is expensive. So it smells expensive uh, when it is in a fragrance. So it starts off with that and then it goes into this mirror resinous olibanum type situation with prominent Styrax for me. Um, so it's a little bit of a daring one, but again, depends how much you spray of it. And yeah, I really love Nanban. I think it's an interesting choice by Arkeist and I love to support this brand, Arkeist. I think that they do wonderful things. It's kind of one of those examples of a modern brand that's um, bringing back a little bit from the past as well. So, yeah, this one, it's an unusual fragrance. It is kind of hard to describe what it smells like, but you may get some dark, harsh leather in there as well. You may not. You may pick up on those manthus in here. You may not. It's just one of those complex fragrances that smells a bit different to everyone. So, yeah. So now we're going to move into a bit of a peculiar tangent because this is like a genre that I've wanted to speak about for quite a while. And it is this feeling. It's, it's this old school vintage glamour that like when you watch old films that's the sensation that you get okay and these fragrances give that to me because back in the day people used to smoke a lot and like freely and everywhere and these fragrances kind of have a little bit of a hint of that residue from the party you know they're a bit naughty they're kind of like after hours and the first one that we have is tabac blanc by caron and this fragrance makes me feel like a lady wearing a tux when I wear this. And it could basically be anyone wearing a tux, right? So it's it starts off with this leathery, enticing carnation. It's like it's like a jazz club kind of thing. Like like you walked into a jazz club and there's a hint of smoke there in the air and you can kind of see it floating around. And I feel like that's being created by the iris in this fragrance. The iris is kind of like a veil, like this smoky thing that's still floating around and moving. And you have this subtle ylang ylang sweetness and oh, tabac blanc, tabac blanc. <laughs> I actually like this fragrance when I'm wearing fancy pajamas as well. Like it's one of those I have my fragrances for that, like the dreaming, the vintage vibes, the the things that you just don't find anymore nowadays, okay? Not that I lived then, but how I think things were like back then via the cinema, the films. <laughs> Tabac Blanc, just this subtle smoke at a jazz club. And then this next fragrance is also in this genre and just look at it. Like, I'm not sure what the casing is inspired by, but to me it looks like an old school lighter or like an old school cigarette case, you know? The ones that uh, maybe your grandma or great grandma had their cigarettes in, a cigarette holder. And this one, yeah, again, plays on this theme, but is a little bit more modern, I would say. Like this one is from the 80s. Tabac Blanc is from originally 1919, so nearly the 20s. So if you think era-wise, like that brings you back to the 20s. This one kind of brings you to the 80s, but to me it brings me more to before that. It brings me to like maybe 60s glamour. And here again, you have that vintage carnation and you have aldehydes, you have rosewood and jasmine and ylang and lots of things put in there, typically 80s, but I feel like it wears well today. Like going out to a party today in this day and age, I would definitely wear a mousse de quartier. I think um, maybe if you're 25 plus, you're more likely to wear this than if you're like a straight up teenager. It used to have a lot more like noticeable civet in it. Uh, now it's no longer made with civet, but there isn't that same rare animalic civet edge to it. So it's like tamed down. The one that I have is the EDT and I enjoy it the way that it is. It dries down with a sandalwood and tonka and then something that's supposed to be that 
old school 80s civet, but it's not quite there. It's not like saying purr in a way that would scare anyone off. So yeah, Moustiquartier. So if we were talking about subtle smoke at a glamorous party with those previous fragrances, now we are talking like full on ashtray. <laughs> and we have Cabochard by Gré. And this fragrance, I had wanted to try for so long, but I just never bought it. It's a very affordable fragrance, but I was just like, mm, I wasn't quite sure. I'd had a lot of bad blind buys. Like you buy things because they're cheap and then they end up being a disappointment. But this one is actually really amazing. This one, like I said, is like two notches up from Moustiquartier and Tabac Blanc. It's a fragrance that brings you to the 50s for sure. I think Marilyn Monroe sitting right next to you. Think, you know, glamorous old Hollywood actors and actresses. Cabochard is, is a little bit like a, a hush, hush. Like it's, it's so naughty like, because it is that ashtray at a party. And I don't mean that literally. I mean that in perfume form, of course. It's really, really sexy. It could be like a cigarette after the deed, if you know what I mean, like, but it's still in a swanky, stylish way. Like, it's like you did something naughty, but you got away with it and no one's suspecting you because you're just so elegant. So Cabochard, again, a host of different notes that are thrown into this one, also has aldehydes. I feel like a lot of these, you know, previous type fragrances have aldehydes in it. So. If you enjoy a little bit of a vintage twist, you are going to love Cabochard, or you could be surprised, try it, even if you don't. If you are a tobacco fragrance lover, you could also really enjoy this one because it has that tobacco-esque, but it really is more ashtray than like pure, the rolled up tobacco inside a cigar or in a pipe or what have you. So Cabochard, try it out. So I hope that you enjoyed this perhaps a little unconventional take on fragrances for the festive season for New Year's Eve. I wish you all a magical rest of your day, rest of your week, rest of your evening, and I will see you in my next video.